Assalamu alaikum audience members and to other audience members general greetings and well wishes here's the deal y'all um, what I'm going to say is not going to really be a bombshell because uh, there's always black folks around that have bombshells to drop but what I'm going to say is going to have the informational content of a bombshell which is one of the reasons that this information will not be publicized and it will not be repeated um, this information that I'm going to tell you is not going to reach many people but its Im uh, importance cannot be underestimated for black Americans black Africans uh, for anybody in the uh, African diaspora and anybody who was interested in Islamic affairs for that matter anybody by extension who was interested in freedom for the oppressed and liberation from oppression. Justice, if you will. Here's the deal, y'all. Um, there is a movie out that is a continuation of propaganda that's already been in existence and circulation. This um, movie is called I Am Slave. It was made in 2010. Uh, I have seen the first 20 minutes of it. I have not finished. It reminded me of the propaganda, uh, the propaganda I used to hear when I was younger, uh, back in the 90s, about how Islam could not be the black man's religion because the Arabs were enslaving black people in Mauritania and in Sudan and were never going to quit doing so because it was a part of their religion to view us as slaves. This is slander if I've ever heard of any. This is an outright lie. This is not the case. No. I'm now living in uh, an Arabic-speaking country. I am now living in a Gulf Arab state. The arrogance here does not have to do with color. It has to do with nationality, and that is oftentimes um, dependent upon the wealth of one's home country. If you come from a wealthy nation, you get respect, and if you come from a poor nation, you don't. And that's really the way things run here. They're not concerned much with color, however, indirectly they have become such mainly because while they are concerned with wealth we know that white nations have impoverished darker nations so we know the result now before I go inside and I visit my friend I want to let you all know one thing that is very important it is not true that black folks I don't know about Mauritania but in Sudan I can tell you it's not true for one reason I went to some of my Sudanese colleagues who work with me here, who have no shame in being black, who are proud of it, who are proud of the name Sudan, who are glad to see me be proud of my African heritage and appreciate it, and with whom I get along quite well and who have no um, uh, divided loyalties in between being black and being Muslim, much like with what many of us struggle with in the United States. Nothing like that. And so... I ask two of them, can you take a look at this movie and tell me if this is realistic, could this realistically even happen in Sudan? Both of them looked and they said, we did not know that this movie was set in Sudan until you told us. Had you not told us, we would have thought it was maybe another country. This is what is important for you all to know. They're lying. The propaganda is BS. And they keep saying this in order to use the Arabs as a reason to get black folks to hate Islam because of some important information. The information is this. The two first slave rebellions in the Americas were started by Muslims. We don't, I, uh, I've heard that Haiti and uh, Jamaica had slave rebellions started by Muslims. That might be the case. I'll have to look further into it, but I do know that Jamaica had a lot of Muslims in it during the slave trade. I also know that um, Brazil had a Muslim slave revolt in 1835 and that this was part of what led Portugal to outlaw and ban slavery throughout its empire in 1888. So simply put, they cannot separate Islam from the black liberation movement from the very beginning of the need for black liberation. Revolts have started with Muslims and been joined by other Africans and even Native Americans. They have been started by non-Muslims. 
but the first ones and many oftentimes the most important ones the most the, the the most difficult for the whites to stop were muslim rebellions muslim led if this got out and black folks began to understand the need for them to accept islam as it was revealed because of its very militancy against injustice in general and the, by extension, they would then understand the need for hijrah, meaning migration in order to protect one's religion and righteousness. Then black folks would say, OK, we have had political. Now we have a religious reason to leave the United States and take what we can with us. Now, when this happens, people, what do you think happens to America's economy that's already become reliant upon uh, Latin Americans to do work without getting paid what they have completely earned? They're not done replacing us yet. This is what people don't understand. America's economy depends on them, but it also depends still on us. Working and not being paid, it depends on our desperation. If we leave, they can't benefit from this desperation any further, unless we desperately try to get back into the United States. This is important, African Americans. You're being lied to. The propaganda is still going on. And it is mainly done so that you don't understand. Now, all of you will not accept Islam, and I understand that. But they are afraid that many of you would at the very least realize that neither Muslims nor is Islam the enemy of black people as it has been reputed to be. This is a dangerous thing for America to find out. There's no grand conspiracy needed. It's just that simple. This information will not reach everybody. But for those of you who this will reach... Please explain to them as best you can what you have learned. Salam alaikum.